In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install World Edit for Minecraft 1.14.1. So, um, yeah, it's pretty damn cool. Uh, just to prove that it does work for you guys as well, we can do uh, well, all the normal commands. Actually, now we get this cool IntelliSense type thing going on. I'll just grab, for example, a wand. Well, not really a wand, sorry, a shovel. And I'm going to do BR Sphere. And I'm actually going to do Minecraft Campfire. Which is one of my favourites. I'm going to do a brush size of two, for example. So there we go. Quit. Bang. Look at that. <laughs> now we've got a gigantic ball of campfires. Some of them have automatically been put out. Um, but it is really that simple. And I'm going to be talking you guys through exactly how to do it. Now, if you do have any issues at all, do post in the comment section below and I'll try and help you out as much as I can. Um, but yeah, guys, if you're new to the channel, uh, we do a lot of time lapses and tutorials on this channel. So uh, feel free to subscribe. And wow, I've just lagged out the entire computer with doing a lot of campfires. I better do undo. Wow. But anyway, let's get on to this tutorial. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is actually download something called Spigot. Now, Spigot is a Minecraft server, but it also allows plugins to run on that server. And World Edit has got its own bucket plugin, which is how we actually get this working. Now, you're probably thinking, ah, oh, but I'm actually only playing on single player, and I actually don't want this. I don't want to have a server running on my machine and it be outwards facing. Don't worry, this is exactly what I do uh, to actually, <laughs> and I've been using this for years and years and years. So you basically run a local server, only you log into it because you're not doing something called port forwarding. Now, port forwarding then allows other players to actually join. I recommend using something like uh, Hamachi for that. If you wanted your friends to come onto your server, it just means that then you can control the access of who can access uh, your Minecraft server and who can actually get onto it. So it's not public, which is what port port forwarding will basically do. So first thing we need to do is just press on download now. Uh, obviously this could change this link, but uh, it'll be in the descri description. It'll be the first one. And uh, yeah, click on that, shove it into a browser. I'm using Chrome um, and we're going to go for the 1.14.1 version of it. Now hit download. Now you'll get onto the next page and it'll say you're about to download Spigot 1.14.1.jar. Click on that one and we'll just let that download. Now while that's actually happening, I've got a folder on my machine which is called Minecraft Local Server. wonder what that's for. Uh, and I'm just going to create a new folder in this. So it's recommended to create a new folder for it because, um, well, it just makes it nice and tidy. So you can see I've got a 1.14 server, that's what I've been using. Now that we're on 1.14.1, um, basically upgrading. I'm basically going to create a new instance and I can copy over that save at some point as well. So I'm going to create a nice new folder, you can call it whatever you want to and then just jump into there. Now probably what you're going to get with Chrome or uh, other browsers is it's going to say that this type of file can harm your computer. Do you want to keep spigot 1.14.jar anyway? Now just click on keep. Okay, Don't worry about this too much. It's because it's a .jar file, same with .exes, because uh, essentially they could install something. It's not known to Windows at least, so that's kind of the reason that um, that always comes up. Now the next thing you want to do is go into downloads folder, wherever that is, or you can just drag and drop it from here. Uh, I'm going to go into date modified, it just so it's always easier, and I'm just going to drag and drop that spigot um, dot jar into that folder there. So then at least we have this whole thing in here, right? Now, as I've seen from the shaders thing, some people have been having uh, problems with running a dot jar file. Uh, it is basically just an ex ex executable j um, Java file, is essentially what it is. Now, if you don't have it showing as just a normal default jar file, you can do the open with, so I'm on Windows 10 here, open with, and you can do choose another app. So it might be that it's trying to open with WinRAR, whoops. So there you go. I've just opened it with WinRAR, apparently. I didn't want to do that, but uh, there we go. Um, yeah, it might be that it's something like WinRAR, uh, because they are effectively just um, uh, zip files. But you can then go on to choose another file. And then if it's not in the other options down here, you can go on to more apps. And if it's not in the option down there, you can do look for another app on this PC. That'll take you to your program files. Um, now you do have to have obviously Java installed. Uh, if you do, then install Java. You can then go onto program files and you have Java and um, you've got Java 8 for me. Um, go onto bin and then the one you actually want is Java w.exe and you just do open with that. Uh, and I would recommend always opening with the, with the latest version of Java. Um, but yeah, what you now do anyway 
once any of that's sorted is just double click on it and it's going to take a little while but what this will do is it will start it up for the first time and it will generate a couple of default config files so this is the same that happens with a normal minecraft server as well um, including an EULA which is something that we have to have a look at and sign so we essentially have to say yes I accept the EULA terms um, and it does have a link in there for you guys to go and see it and um, decide if you do accept those terms or not so there we go now it's all started you should get server.properties EULA.txt and you also get logs which will just have the latest logs so you know you can open that up if you wanted to Ooh, we'll open that up it's quite big um, if I fail to load properties file blah 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 and you fail to load that as well you have to agree to it you know it's the typical kind of like normal stuff really so if we go back to that main folder EULA.txt I'm going to open this up with notepad no I'm going to open it up with notepad just normal notepad um, now I do recommend that you guys go over to this website that's in here and if you do accept those terms then what you do is you do EULA equals guess what true instead and then you click save for that one nice and easy so the next we're going to do is an edit on the server.properties so again I'm going to do an open with because I'm trying to make it as, uh, as normal as possible for you guys and that and apparently it doesn't want to oh it's because it doesn't recognize it obviously it's a .properties file I'm going to open it with notepad and this will be your kind of um, properties for your Minecraft server. These are the normal ones that you get with any sort of Minecraft server. So I'm going to do a couple of tweaks with game mode equals survival. I'm going to switch that to game mode equals creative. Um, I'm also going to switch the difficulty because I'm a creative player to peaceful because I don't want any mobs appearing. Peaceful. There we go. I have spell right. Spawn monsters. I'm going to switch that to false. Um, anything else I need to worry about? No, max player is 20. I don't really worry about that. Um, I usually just use another local account running on my machine if I want to log into it. Server IP, you don't need to worry about that as well because we're just running it local, so we just leave that blank. That'll be your port that you're running on. If you wanted multiples running on your machine, you could then change the port. Uh, generate structures, for, uh, true, that's fine. Uh, that will do. Now, if you do want to, for example, copy one of your saves into here, then you would literally just copy the save file, drop it into this folder here. So, for example, let's, let me go and grab... I don't want to open up the world. Uh, I haven't got anything at the minute, actually. I haven't. But um, you'd essentially just have, you know, drag it into there and cool my cool world. Um, so you'd have your save folder uh, would just be directly in there. And then from this server.properties file, you can then change on here. You'll have level world. And you could then do my cool, not Mr. Cool World, my cool world. You know, that's where you'd actually put that in there. But uh, I'm just going to keep it as it doesn't like that. I'm going to keep it as world like that. So uh, click on that and do save. Close that one up. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of my cool world. <laughs> and um, yeah, the next thing we want to do is actually create a batch file. So batch file will just allow us to um, see the console, which is really, really useful. So the way we do this is we do right click, we do new, and then you're probably going to want to do text document. Now by default, it will create a text document that I can see here, which um, We'll open with Notepad++, but I'm going to change that. So what we'll do first is we're just going to rename this. Actually, it doesn't really matter if we rename it. Let's just open it first. Open it with Notepad. And what we're going to do is we're going to say Java. And then we're going to do dash big X M S. Now, I should actually say this is all going to be in the description. Um, and this is essentially the minimum amount of RAM that you want it to use. So I'm going to say one gig. Now, you'll probably see on a lot of older videos, they used to say one, you know, 24m which is just megabytes so that's the same as one gig um, I would just recommend you know making it really simple let me just zoom in on this I can't even make this big can I wrap font oh, sorry I'm gonna try and make this bigger for you guys there we go that's better isn't it maybe maybe even bigger than that because we can just go really huge on this to make it really really clear there we go um, so yeah you can just go with one one gig it understands it um, if we ever get into the terabytes of RAM <laughs> Sure, they'll put one T on there. Um, and I'm going to actually say that it's going to have a maximum as well, which has got dash X, M, X, and two gig. Um, now, the next thing you do is you do dash jar. So these are all what are called arguments. So these are command line arguments. So the jar file that we're going to be using or referencing is going to be that spigot dash 1.14.1 file. Okay. So we just do spigot uh, dash 1.14.1 dot jar. And I'm going to do dash O and true. And I have no idea what the dash O true does. Uh, I can't actually remember. I've just been doing it forever. Now, if you do, for example, have a mistake 
in your command line, um, there is a way that you can actually catch that. So what I'm going to do, for example, I'm going to say spigot2 and I haven't obviously got in that folder a spigot2. So I'm going to make it look like you've made a mistake in that command line if you've written it and not copied it from the description, which is absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, we've got a mistake in there. I'll show you what actually happens. So what you'll now do is if you do save as, you go onto the all files, this is really important, and we're actually going to call it start.bat. So get rid of that .text extension and then just click save. There we go. So what we should have is this start.bat. We're going to get rid of that new text document thing. And if we double click on this, it disappears, right? Because we've got an error. Um, and there is a way to actually see the error because look, command line, oh, it's gone. It's gone instantly. So what you can actually do is you can go onto this and put on another line, you can actually do at pause. Oh, it sounds really simple, but uh, honestly, this will this will save you. Um, so there you go. So now you can see, ah, error to access file, jar file, spigot2. That's because it doesn't exist, right? And then any case to continue. So at least you actually get that. So if you do have errors, I definitely recommend whacking that on the end. But there we go. We can correct that, press save, just in case you do, do make that mistake. Uh, it can be a bit of pain. So then if we click on this now, Error, this build is outdated, it doesn't like it apparently, well that's absolutely fine. <laughs> I don't know why it's saying it's updated, but it's picked up the Java options, it'll take a little while to actually get started up. And we do have to let this run um, once. Uh, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a Minecraft launcher. And I don't even think I've got a 1.14.1 update yet, so I'm going to just let that run. Uh, let me get launcher options here, and add new. Uh, latest configuration 1.14.1. Save that and I need to run that as well. So here we go. Onto here. Is it there? It is. So I need to run that and start up. There we go. So at least now you can see that the actual server itself self is actually starting to run. It's preparing the area and we'll wait until it gets to 100% during while it's doing that actually. All we can do is we can go on to the next link which is going to be the world edit link. So this is going to go to Bucket. Now, of course, you've got a full, fully functioning Spigot server, so you can, you can go on Bucket and get whatever you want. Uh, there is an absolute ton of like tools uh, available for it, so do feel free to do it. But um, I will give you a link directly to this page, which will be the downloads. And you'll see this one here, world edit 7.0.0, release candidate 2, 1.30.2 slash 1.14.1. Click on the download button. So click on that. I'm amazed that this came out on the 15th and it's already got 18,000 downloads. That is incredible. But actually it does work. This one does work on 1.14 as well. Um, so I actually did install that before doing it. So what you get again is the this type of heart file can harm your computer. Do you want to keep uh, the bucket? And yeah, we do. And yet again, if we get our two folders open, we'll now... Oh, I need to do the date modified. Sometimes you'll find that you just have to click it again. Um, what you'll now find as, as our server has completely created, there we go, it's done everything and it's done. Um, what you'll now find is you've got a plugins folder. Hey, that's cool. And it's also generated the world for us as well. So now what we can do is go into plugins and if we drag world edit dash bucket blah 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 blah, all those version stuff, we can drop it in there. Now you'll be wondering, oh, is that instant then? It's not. Um, you can. I'm pretty sure you can do something where you kind of uh, re-grab the config. But what we're going to do is we're going to do stop in the command console. And that will stop the server. That will just shut it down safely. Um, if you click on the X, it just doesn't really shut it down safely. And then if we double click on the start.bat, we'll now let that start running. And that will start to start up. So then we should get our Minecraft as well. So here we go. We'll grab Minecraft while it's doing. Um, so how you actually access this server, really easy again. If you go into multiplayer, there we go. Oh yeah, you'll also get this as well, um, most likely, which is just um, basically saying that it's blocks and features of the app. Um, I actually do use two accounts, so I actually use this and I could have this on another PC, so I actually go and say that it's able to communicate on the public network, so that is my Wi-Fi. So that's what I would uh, kind of like say to do and just do allow access, um, you know, if it's I actually could do it on private networks, actually, to be fair. But yeah, public access access pretty safe. Um, so what you'd actually do on here, you have, you know, your normal server list. You can, of course, do add server, and we can actually call it... Apparently I can't. <laughs> do backspace. My 1.14.1 world edit server. Wow, that is descriptive, isn't it? Uh, and for the server address, you just do local host, because this is running on your machine. And you can just do done. Right, and then we've got it. Oh, look, we can see it's running. It's 
pretty good. Double click on that. So it's already loaded up all that stuff so I can actually see that going on there. And now, wait, we're in the world. Oh yeah, I need to just sort this out. There's a couple of things I'm going to have to sort out. The music as well, always drives me nuts. Oh, it's already off, that's fine. So there we go, I can fly around, I can play some blocks. Can I do world edit though? Do slash slash wand. There you go. Um, you are not permitted to do that are you in the right mode. So, what do you have to do? Go onto your server console and you're going to type op space and then your name, your Minecraft name that is. So op Lord Dacker for me. And if I do that, you'll then see that it comes out made Lord Dacker a server operator. That's why you have to do the batch file. It's so that you do get the server console. It's also really good for debugging. So there we go. Got that in there. Now can we do slash slash oops wand. Oh, look at this. Magical world edit. And we can, of course, do something like slash slash set stone. There we go, look at that, some stone. Um, if we also grab, you know, other tools just to prove everything that's going on, uh, we can, for example, mask, I don't know, uh, let's go for 17, 18, and we're going to do a BR. Sphere of, uh, Come on, that, something like that. There we go, and now we're changing things. Make this bigger, actually. Let me make this a bigger brush to six. Okay, max configuration is five. It's fine. There we go. Now we can make this look all good. <laughs> well, maybe not all good. But, you know, you can do all your, like, typical world edit functions now in there. Now, you'll notice as well, even though 1.13 removed the block IDs, world edit does use let you use the block IDs. Uh, but you could, of course, do um, Minecraft stone. I, I don't know why I'm thinking of stone. It's just a... Uh, Nice and easy one. Let me just do mask 17, 18. Is that 17 and 18? I think those are slightly different now. There we go. So some of those, or maybe even mask two, right? So we can now start painting stuff. I don't know why I'd want to make all this stone, but you know you can do that kind of stuff now. So um, I'll do I'll do another tutorial on on world edit at some point. Uh, refresher, but that is literally how you can get it working. Um, so it's nice and easy then. So now you've got in uh, world edit working in 1.14.1 now if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to comment like and subscribe um, I really do appreciate uh, all the comments that you guys give me and um, yeah hopefully this has all worked out if it hasn't do let me know I will try and help you in the description um, I didn't realize these lime wall looks horrible um, but yeah I will try and help you out as much as possible but yeah guys I'll check you out on the next video